Well, good morning, actually. It's uh, good afternoon, but I'm here uh, recording this uh, Monday afternoon. We'll put it up on Tuesday morning, uh, but I'm with, here with my son, Clay, my youngest son. He lives in Bellingham. I've been doing a couple of videos from here in a parking lot out near uh, Starbucks uh, for the last couple of mornings, And uh, but I've always wanted to just have Clay share together. We've done that a few times when we've had opportunity. Say good morning, Clay. Good morning, Clay. And one of the things that I love about my youngest son, he is so stinking literal. Uh, but anyway, we always have a great time going at each other back and forth. And uh, uh, my other son, Clay's older brother, Cliff, as many of you know, uh, lives on Maui. And uh, the heartbreak that is going on there, uh, he was yeah. just moments away from losing his own life. Uh, lost everything that he had, basically. A few, the clothes he had on his back and a couple of couple of pieces of clothing, a birth certificate, and a social security card, and one guitar. Uh, he lost everything else, absolutely everything gone. His job is gone. The, the art gallery where he worked is gone. Uh, the paintings that were there, not only in his gallery, but in every gallery that was yeah. there on Front Street is gone. Uh, millions of dollars worth of art that was gone. To say nothing of the lives of people, thousands of people who have been impacted as a result of this fire. And uh, boy, you know, it raises questions yeah. in our minds oftentimes. You know, we, we want in those times to say, why God, why this? Why did this have to happen? Yeah. And uh, I don't know, Clay, uh, I don't have necessarily a good answer for that. Uh, uh, I think the bottom line is, and we've talked about this, is that it comes down to trust. Are we gonna trust God with our lives and know that he's in control? Even, even in the midst of tragedy, does God have a plan and a purpose? Yeah. And we've shared some thoughts back and forth on that. So uh, maybe you've got a couple of thoughts you wanna share and we'll just well, on, bounce that around. On tragedy, I, I can't think, there's a, there's a book that C.S. Lewis wrote uh, called The Problem of Pain. Yeah. And it's, it is, it's, it, it's, it's amazing. It's not an easy read necessarily no. as C.S. Lewis can be, but the summary of it is, is he, see, he's explaining why we need the ability to experience pain, both in our self and in our environment, if we have free will. Yeah. Because free will dictates a neutral environment yes. that can experience good and bad. Otherwise, it's not really free will anymore. Yeah. And so exactly. really, it's God giving us the ability to choose for ourselves mm, mm. that necessitates that kind of thing happening. Yeah. Uh, it, it's hard. It's not easy. Yeah. Pain's not fun. But, um, so, so that really helped me get a grasp conceptually on why pain exists, um, on why God allows it. Right, yeah. Um, and then there's the other side of that coin. Um, as many parents know, um, as I'm teaching my kids and raising my kids, you know, I find that sometimes, uh, you know, struggle builds resilience. Yeah, exactly. uh, We see that in nature. We see that in, in biology. Sure. Uh, yeah, uh, what does the Bible say? That a seed doesn't grow unless it falls on the ground and dies. Yeah, a caterpillar or a butterfly doesn't come without a cocoon. Yeah, so. Pearls aren't made without a yeah. grain of sand and a clam. I mean, there's. Gold's purification. On on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, on and on and on. So, uh, you know, as I was thinking through uh, the the verse in Esther really stuck in my mind. I think mm -hmm. it's four four. Yeah. Um, that where Esther's uncle says to her, you know, for such a time as this. Perhaps you've been called to the yeah. kingdom for such an hour as this. Yeah. And I think that so often we have a really narrow view of what's going on, mm -hmm. and we lack the scope. And it's hard to remove ourselves from that situation and right. trust the Lord. Yep, exactly. That, that there's more than what I can see. Yes. You know, the maze analogy is just so clear in my mind that sometimes to get to the end of the maze forward, you have to go backwards a little bit. Mm. And, and I mean, I know it's not perfect, but it, it just sets the clarity that sometimes, even though we think this is the way, God understands that there's other things that have to happen and mm -hmm. take place yeah, yeah. in his goodness. And so 
And I, and I think one of the things that sometimes we fail to understand is that a huge part, the, I think the majority of the part of what is taking place in us individually is that God is shaping us and molding us into yeah. the image of Jesus Christ, those of us who know the Lord. For those who don't know the Lord, it's so that they would come to the Lord. Because when we are faced with our own mortality and we see devastation all around us, that gives us an opportunity to say, you know, where is God? And he's there. He's there for people to know, to come to know him. Uh, and so what is our part as Christians then? Well, we have to trust. Yep. Jesus said, don't be surprised when this happened. Peter bears that out you know, as sojourners and pilgrims, people who are just passing through. Yeah. Don't be surprised at suffering. If Jesus suffered, guess what? Jesus said, if they did this to me, they're going to do it to you. So if this stuff happens there, so what should we as Christians do? Well, here's an opportunity for those of you, perhaps in Hawaii, who may watch this, or you know people who have gone through this, an opportunity to, to share with them that God is still at work. He is still, and you are there. Survive. I, I mean, I can imagine people saying, why me? All these people around me have died. Why am I alive? Well, God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And, and who are you accountable for? All of those other people? No, you're only accountable for you. And what will you do in the face of this in terms of your own walk and relationship to the Lord? Yeah, and I, I think... Um, another side of that idea and that is that it doesn't mean you know we're excited yeah for sure or that you know we don't say any of this to downplay the no, tragedy no no certainly not at all it's horrific it, I, I, I I've just been crying my eyes out almost every time I talk to my brother yeah and think about him yeah um, and, and the the hope is that these ideas that God is doing something, mm -hmm. He's not idle. Yeah, that that would let those people, or you, when you experience tragedy, to have hope in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. That like Psalm twenty three, this I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil because you're with me. Yes, right. The idea isn't that we're out of that valley. No, not at all. But in the midst of these things, we understand. Because God sees more and he knows more and he's yes. in control. Amen. We can trust that even though there's this horrible pain and heartache, God is working. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the 84th Psalm. It talks about passing through the valley of Baca. Yeah. And Baca means the valley of weeping. But the thought that occurred to me about that is as we pass through, yeah. we're not going to live in that valley that valley of weeping we pass through and as we pass through we leave pools and springs mm -hmm. for others to partake of and so then we go to the new testament and, and it talks about we are able to comfort those who are in trouble and struggling with the same comfort that we have been comforted with so we never know what god's plan and exact purpose sometimes is are but we trust him in the midst of that and my my encouragement to all of you uh, whether you're there or wondering about what's going on and you, you're wondering why God, how God, all of those questions that come, don't give up your trust in your hope. We don't yeah. despair because we know that God loves and cares and has compassion. And uh, even in the midst of all this, we can say thank you, Father, and know that he has a plan and purpose for our lives individually. Amen. Amen. Well, I pray that's a good seed that will be planted deep in, the, in your heart and that will be a blessing and help to you today. And we do pray for all of those precious, precious people in Lahaina and their relatives and other people, uh, some of them around the world who have people there who have suffered loss and experienced tragedy. Oh, God's heart is for you, my friends. It loves you and cares deeply about what's going on in your life. We want to encourage you to look to him for comfort and help. Amen. Well, thanks, son. Of course. It's good to have you here with me. We'll, we'll chat more. Uh, in the next couple days. So thanks for joining us today on Some Good Seeds. Amen. May the Lord richly bless you, I pray.